The point here is, and I've just given it a bit, I've just embellished it a bit here. The point here is that we have two different dot products which will give us the same result. And this means we can rewrite our original closed line integral. And I've done that in the bottom of your screen. So if the closed line integral of r dot dl, that's equivalent to the closed line integral of minus r sub x i hat plus r sub y j hat dotted with n hat dl. And this is really just some mathematical manipulation. It's a bit of a pain in the face, but with these things, as I said at video number one, we have to do it in order to get the really powerful result. Really, however, we are now using a new function because we initially started out with r is equal to r sub x i hat, well, say, plus r sub x i hat, plus r sub y j hat. But now we are using one which is minus r sub x i hat, plus r sub y j hat. So, you know, it's a different function. Let's give it a new name. We're going to call this f. This is a new vector field, f. So the point here is that f sub x is minus r sub x. This is really important. The signs are very important. And f sub y is plus r sub y. If we write it this way, we can rewrite the closed line integral of r dot dl as the closed line integral of f dot n hat dl. Now I hope you can see the usefulness of bringing in this unit normal. It really simplifies the result. Let's remind ourselves what the path integral from Green's theorem was, uh, has now become. So we say it's the closed line integral of r dot dl is the closed line integral of f dot n hat dl. Green's theorem then is written at the very bottom of your screen. So we have the closed line integral of r dot dl is the double integral of del r sub y del x minus del r sub x del y dx dy, which as we've just seen is equal to the closed line integral of f dot n hat dl. I've rewritten this on the top of the screen and just for clarity's sake, I've written the relationship between the vector field f and the vector field r. Of course, as I'm, I'm stressing it because it's, it's quite subtle, is this, the difference is this negate here. Let's remind ourselves what the two-dimensional divergence theorem was. I've written that at the, towards the bottom of your screen. So you have the closed surface, excuse me, the closed line integral of the, of a dot dl is the surface integral of the divergence of a. Now at the bottom of your screen, I've written what defined a to be, a sub x i hat and a sub y j hat. You might think I'm being overly pedantic or fastidious with these particular definitions but it's something that I found I needed to do when I was deriving this at the start, so perhaps it's something which you might find useful if I do.